Hey there, welcome back to the Deadpool and Honey Badger podcast. Boy, the soundtrack for Deadpool and Wolverine is a real banger, am I right? Right on brand. He is awful at podcasting, but that's okay, because today we're here to listen. That's right. I've prepared a super cut of all of your grunting from the film. Oh, God. Just like that. That was, I believe, that one. Uh, Do we get that? That was a good one. Roll it. Spoiler alert! Podcasting from somewhere in Central Florida. Where is the bloody rum? I see you cried knifey spoony before. Let's drink some rum. Rum is the power. Rum is the key. Rum is the thing that will set us free. Rum, rum, rum. And nerdy. Rum, rum, rum. Rum, rum, rum. And nerdy. Sit back, relax, remember to turn off your cell phones. For the next hour, let me be your candy crush. Hey everybody, welcome to Rum and Nerdy, I'm Greg. And I'm Garrick. And this is episode 4.31, Chimichanga, motherfucker. <laughs> Deadpool's favorite food. Yay. <sighs> I'm, I'm glad that we preempted the entire episode with spoiler alert. It had to be done, because we're not going <laughs> to shut the fuck up. This is going to be an 18-hour episode about a two-hour and nine-minute movie. I have seen so many reviews of that. That have gone on that way, like, oh, yeah, we break down every spoiler and, or an Easter egg inside the new Deadpool movie, and it's a two-hour-long YouTube video, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, it's sensory overload. It is a constant stream of awesomeness and badassery. It's It it really makes up for all of the superhero fatigue yeah. that you experience from, like, because everything that, everything that the Marvel Universe tries to do... They try to make it epic. They try to make it over the top. They try to go above and beyond and make it this giant, grand thing. And then Deadpool's like, yeah, <laughs> but but these are comic books. They're supposed to be fun. You forgot the fun. You forgot well, the fun. And here's the thing. It, it's like, I, and I don't think anything went untouched. He made every freaking Marvel movie the butt of his joke. Made fun of all of the things. Everything. Nothing was safe. And it's not like, hey, it's the MCU. No, no, no. It was Marvel. It was Fox. It 20th was 20th Century Fox. Yeah, oh, they got fuck. hammered. Hammered. Yeah. Disney. Unrelenting. Yeah. yeah. Like, they talk a lot about cocaine, but they can't admit to doing it because Disney wouldn't allow them to or whatever. Like, yeah. Or, no, you, reoccurring you, you, joke. You, you can't show them doing it, but yeah. Which feels like it was a note that they got from a corporate lawyer, and they're like, oh, that's a hilarious note. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, that's a plot point now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a plot point. Yeah. it Because <laughs> they show the bag of, they show a baggie, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, we can't do that because of Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Unrelenting. Um, fun. Yeah, just yeah, fun. Just, just the just beginning. For starting. Yeah. It's a fun movie. Yeah. It's, re- it's, I can't tell you the last time I had that much fun at a movie. I laughed like Gr- I was watching stand up. Gratuitous fun. Yeah. Yeah. So from the beginning, um, setting up the episode today, your suggestion was to start with um back our NSYNC's bye bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Which is where really the movie starts. It yeah, because it's it's it starts off with uh and and again, superhero fatigue. I didn't see it. Logan. You didn't see Logan? I know. I know. Like, I'll, I'll probably... Wasn't that one like Oscar nominated? It was fantastic. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll go. Ba- I'll go back and watch it. Because like Logan, when you talk about I, like I, I know how it ends. Yeah. Well, there's that. <laughs> but it, like that one, they didn't approach like a superhero movie. That this is more like a drama. This is hmm. very emotional. It's not. It's not your typical thing. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, it's still not as fun as Deadpool. No. It but, wasn't, and it wasn't pulling Deadpool numbers. What does? Yeah. Highest opening box office for a rated R movie in history. Yeah, it was it was crazy. What was the what what was the final weekend like the weekend number was two hundred eight million, something like that? Oh, no. Five hundred eight million? Um It was it was a, it was an absolutely ridiculous number. But yeah. And and they, they put the caveat in there for an R rated movie because it's not opening movie of all time, but it was uh, the R-rated record. Oh, I was wrong. What is it? Um, 205. 
Oh, it was so close. Yeah, the third. I lost Price is Right rules. But that, that, that was just opening weekend. That's not where it's at. It was the opening weekend number, which is huge. Yeah. Um, oh, no, 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 no. So that was that was a BBC number. Oh. Um, ticket sales stand. So this is um, apparently according to Variety, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's already crossed 550 million. Ticket sales stand at 261 million in North America and 284 internationally. Okay. So it's like 545.8 million after just five days of release. So we actually saw it on Monday. You oh. saw it on Friday. I saw it on Friday, yeah. Yeah, Friday, Friday when it, and it opened on technically Thursday night. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So yeah, yeah, it's five hundred fifty million in five days. We saw it on Monday night just because um, by the time we went to look for tickets on Saturday for a Sunday showing, mm-hmm. it, yeah, just not good. I wanted to see it on an IMAX screen too. So oh, I, yeah, I didn't limited do that. options. Yeah. Sandy doesn't do well with three D. I didn't see it. Uh, nothing special. I saw just a theater. Yeah, and it was comfy seat, comfy reclining seats, and yeah, it was. just it was a it was a, a solid theater experience, but uh, nothing, no fancy, you know, Atmos sound or IMAX yep. screen or three none of that garbage. God. It was still it was fine. It was it was great. It was so good. Yeah, I want to go see it again. I would too, for no other reason than to look at all of the stupid Easter egg shit in the background. Yeah, every single scene. You have to be not watching the movie and just looking at the crap in the background. There's so much you told me about I missed. Yeah. So, okay, so let's let's start out. We've and you've been warned, so this is on you for listening to this fucking thing before you see it. So <laughs> as much as I'm like you need to stop listening if you haven't seen it unless you just don't care. Yeah. Cuz we don't. We don't care if you've seen it. No. We've seen it. No, not at all. So, um yeah, so opening scene uh, and they like the typical Deadpool is like, hey, here's a fight scene that we're going to do in really fun cinematography, really cool edits, and a lot of fun, very humorous. And then we're going to backtrack and set it up. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's pretty typical for yep. a Deadpool movie. Yep. Um, uh, all set to in sync. Yep. And he's doing the bye 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 dance while murdering a whole bunch of uh, TVA which, guards. Which, which is actually a really long-running Deadpool joke, or it's a it's a, uh, it's a a long con kind of joke. Because did you see, was it Deadpool 1 or Deadpool 2, where they had Celine Dion doing the doing a song for it? And there's a whole bit after, it was like, no, 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 you, you're at 11. Like, I need you to come in at like a 5. You're just way too good for this. This is a Deadpool movie. We need, <laughs> we need, we need some mediocre music for this thing. Like it was, it was a whole kind of comedy bit that they did. I don't remember that. Yeah, I watched that the other day, and I'm like, oh, that's really hilarious because next up, in sync. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. um, and and soundtrack wise, they bring back all the favorites from mm-hmm. like his favorites, the you know, mm-hmm. all the stuff in the background. But okay, so starts out big fight scene. He's digging up the cor- Logan, the corpse of Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The whole time he's monologuing on, on like you guys, you, nobody understands what this regeneration thing means. He's down there. He's just like thinking about shit. Yeah. And, like, and he gets in and he goes, "Son of it!" He's like, <laughs> taking the, the shovel, the, the metal skeleton. Just, yeah. yeah. He's sitting, he's sitting there, <laughs> almost like snuggling, spooning with this metal skeleton with the tree. The tree branch is still going still through sticking it. out of it. Still in the crappy white t-shirt that yeah. he's wearing when he died. Yeah. Um. You know, and it's, it's like with the the chops, yeah. this adamantium skeleton with the chops and everything else. Yeah. And, um, and then he slowly, he's like, yeah, I'm going to kill you guys. Like the TVA come out. TVA, which, what was it, Loki? And they, yeah. he flat out references it, you know, like, oh yeah, that's that's the, the enemy from Loki season one, episode eight. Like, I mean, he, he uh, yeah. But yeah. I'm I'm glad that I paid attention to Loki because that was kind of a... Yeah, Sandy a major a major element of this movie. It's like, oh shit, they they brought back people from Loki and places yeah, from Loki. They, and they leaned on Loki season one a lot. Yeah, for the justification for the multiple universes and everything else going on, and which I felt worked out really well. 
Yeah. It, it, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, look, some magic, and then boom, another multiverse thing. It's like, no, nope, fuck it. Here's the Well, thing. I think it works so well because they dig on it hard yeah. like oh this lazy storytelling device like multiple universes <laughs> <laughs> um you know but um so after the montage he goes he's in his regular life he's he's in his 50s now and he's like trying to sell cars yeah with his stapled he, he, on toupee he's working at a, at a car max equivalent yeah and um with peter you know yeah and and so um then it's his birthday party and everybody's there and he's kind of sad because his life didn't really go anywhere. Great. Mm-hmm. He was rejected from the Avengers. and blah, yeah, he, yeah, he tried to audition for the uh, Avengers, yeah. Yeah. And um, and then so, you know, TVA comes and picks him up and he thinks he's got to fight him, but they take him back because they're like, your universe is dying, but we, wanna, we want you to come and help us over here. So he's going to finally get his chance at greatness, but it means that his world and his friends die. Mm -hmm. And he can't do that. Well, why, Garrick, please explain to the listeners why his universe is dying. Oh, because they're, they're, what what they call it, the the anchor, the anchor hero or the anchor character was killed, happened to be Wolverine. Yeah. So Logan and Deadpool are in universe 10,005. Or something like that. Ten zero zero five, mm-hmm. and um, so, but the sacred timeline is what six sixty five or whatever, uh, uh, which is what the kind of the the most the MCU Avengers all that takes place in the the um, C1- sacred timeline. Yeah, yeah, the sacred timeline. C one thirty seven. The uh, is that what it is? No, I thought it was the universe was. No, that that's where the Prime Rick is from. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I was like, right. yeah. Sorry, um, didn't mean to switch gears for you. Which side note? Um, mm-hmm. Last night, the night after we watched Deadpool, we watched the um, Stargate. We're in like late season nine right now for Stargate. Uh, Atlantis. We're just S- regular S- SG one. Okay, but it's the one where. There's like a hiccup with the thing after the black hole, so all the different SG-1 teams keep coming back to the main Earth. Oh, yeah. And at one point, there's a room full of Carters. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I looked over at Sandy, and I'm like, look, it's the Council of Carter. <laughs> and she didn't get that either. Oh, so that's, uh, that's... She doesn't really... She's not a nerd. No. Yeah, she's a cat lady, but not a nerd. Mm. Anyway, so... Um, but yes, so they... the. He's basically gonna like, hey, you get to be this thing, and um, he's like, no, I gotta, I have to go, I gotta go replace my Wolverine. Yeah, so that he's, like, he's like, I'm just gonna go get a new anchor, a new anchor. Uh. So he, yeah, so he steals a little phone tablet thing, and yep. off he goes. Montage scene of different Wolverines, mm-hmm. um, which was a fucking hilarious because like one of the ones, the first ones he saw, he walks into a bar, and you know he's like, hey, bub, and he turns. <laughs> And the Wolverine is like three foot tall. Yeah, short Wolverine, yeah. <laughs> um, and he's like, no, 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 you won't work. And then so he goes, <laughs> and he says, cue montage. Yeah. And it's like going through, uh, and you see all these different variations. And they do with some really good tribute stuff in there, too. Yeah, there are, especially, yeah, to the comics and to the multiverse stuff. There are, a lot yeah. of those were references that, again, way over my head, because I wasn't yeah um, as deep into it. But I heard people talking about it. I'm like, oh, wow, that... He put a lot of effort into this. Oh yeah, yeah. They they like they had they had to have a lot of like comic book experts sit there and go, oh, we got to re- like this and this and this, um, you know. And and at one of them was the cavalry. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, this is my guy, and he turns on it's Henry Cavill. Yeah. Um, with cigar, the chops, everything else, uh, but lands on the disgraced Wolverine, mm-hmm. um, which. I don't know. It's it's freaking fantastic because um, the guy's basically completely given up. Yeah, but he gets them and he pulls them back into his world. Well, he pull, yeah, well pulls them into uh, the TVA. Back to the TVA. And yeah, that didn't go well. Ultimately, the TVA wasn't happy with his plan. No, and it's like you can't do that, and blah blah blah. So they get sent to the void, which is again from. Loki season one. And it was, uh, th- that truthfully was where you had to turn up the, you know, just the paying attention, the shit that was going on. 
Oh, it went nuts. Tur- turn up to 11 because every single, everything in the void was a reference to something. And it was it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And and there were some some big things that they were making fun of. Like, oh, this was discarded and sent to the void. And they had the 20th Century Fox logo yeah. sitting there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's a... I wouldn't and call, they, did, they did. It's, it wasn't like this thing that was just in the background, quick either. Oh no, no, that it was, was a major the backdrop piece. for a huge fight scene. Yeah, it was a, that was a major chunk of set dressing. That's one of those things where, like, that's not a that's not an Easter egg. That's a reference. Yeah, I like to differentiate between the two. Like that was very overt, giant sign. He made a joke about 20th Century Fox, and I think looked back at it. I mean, that was yeah. a, that, that was obvious. Yeah, all the subtle shit that they had. In the void. That's the stuff that... Uh... <laughs> so, the first huge laugh. Uh, I take it back. Second huge laugh. First huge laugh mm-hmm. is when he started dancing bye, bye, bye. I lost my shit laugh. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, like, I, I know yeah. Fatone, so um, any I'm, reference I, to... I know it, Fatone. It, it, any, yeah, but, 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 it's like, hey, I live in Central Florida. A lot of us know him. It's not that big a deal. Actually, he has a, he has a car at my brother's shop right now. Yeah, there so, you go. So, yeah, look at that. Six points of, of Joey, Joey Fatone. Fatone. <laughs> <laughs> Three points of Joey Fatone. Whatever. Um, so he, um, yeah, so so Chris, the actor, Chris Evans, shows up. And he's all hooded. And you kind of like, oh, that's a, whoa, that's, who's that, who's that voice? And he, and he's all like, yeah, it's not, you know, that's not what you think here. And he's he's kind of monologuing on, on what the void is and blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, and they're going to come and get us, and they're on their way. And then he jumps down, and he pulls his thing back, his hood. And we're like, holy shit, it's Captain America in the void. Yeah. He's back. And um, and you're like, oh, my God, Captain's going to fight with these two to fight these marauders that are coming. And he looks, and he goes, flame on. <laughs> and he's like, with Johnny Blaze from the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Uh, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, that was a that was a major moment. Not like because he's got these these bandage wraps around all of his clothes. To, I mean, you can tell that he's kind of wearing like a red, white, and blue. But yeah, you only mostly see, like you're like, oh, it's Captain. Oh, Captain's there. Oh my god! And then when he says that, ever like, and of course, Sandy's like, what's so funny? <laughs> that's not Captain he's playing America. a guy that's not him. Yeah. So. um yeah, and then they they like right off the bat, he gets fucked up, mm-hmm. and then they get captured and all that stuff. Yeah. So you recognized a lot of Easter eggs in this section. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, there's there's and you know some there's some obvious stuff like a ton of Thanos's Q ships and uh, um, the helicarrier thing. Yeah, I did um, see I did see the uh, Avenger. Yeah, the uh, the ship from Guardians of the Galaxy, um, you know, was in was in one of the scenes. Just there's a ton of stuff, but I didn't realize this going in uh, going into it. Ryan Reynolds is a huge John Candy fan. I did not know that. Yeah, maybe maybe a Canadian thing, but uh, in one of the scenes, they're walking. Th- they're they're just walking through a scene. And of course, it's the void. There's just burned out rubble everywhere, and there's this burned out car in the background. And I'm like, man, that. That looks exactly like John Candy's car from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. The rental car that catches on fire. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, no, they wouldn't put that. And then as the characters are walking through the scene and, and, the, and the camera kind of pans, they have John Candy's trunk from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles sitting in Jeez. front of the car. Like, oh, yeah, this is quite obviously this random car from this random movie. Yeah. And that's and that's not even the only the only planes, trains, and automobiles reference. I I, I the, one of the guys at the TVA had a had a coffee mug that had, I like me or yeah. It, yeah yeah and that was well, well and they show that at the entry t- at the opening scene like um, Deadpool is drinking out of that same mug earlier uh-huh. in the movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that that's what it was from. Yeah yeah that was a reference to John Candy's uh, rant when he was having it out with Steve Martin mm. again from yeah, yeah, plane, yeah, yeah. planes, trains, and automobiles. So, um, so they're basically, they're captured and they're taken to what is, um, there's a character named, uh, Cassandra Nova, who Who's is from the comic books. 
yeah, I don't remember her at all from the comic books. Um, but apparently it's... She's from the comic books. Xavier's... Professor X's twin... Uh, twin unborn sister that's yeah and there's yeah. And, and, the, and there's a huge backstory to that too I, I briefly read a thing on it where they were trying to explain it and it was, it was there was actually like a witch and then like some dark energy and yeah. blah 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 but moral of the story is it's another it's another comic book reference yeah so um, her like little compound mm-hmm. is actually made out of a dead ant man that is giant sized yeah, and so, and and, you know, you know, and when the, when, when the villain makes the reveal, like they open up the Ant Man helmet and, and, and it just reveals a giant yeah. skull in there, which was one of my favorite jokes of the entire movie. When Ryan Reynolds looks at it, he goes, "Oh look, Paul Rudd finally aged." <laughs> 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 but the great thing is is her um, her minions that are in that courtyard. Now the courtyard it's basically like Ant Man laying on the stomach, looking forward. His arms out in a circle, and, I think you and see, the hands I think make you, the gate. I think you see it in the trailer. Yeah. So there's that, and opens up and whatever. So they they've got him in the courtyard, and it's really interesting because the characters that are in there, like I I recognize like Toad. They they mm-hmm. mentioned Toad. Yep. Who I'm trying to remember the actor's name, but he was also the same actor played Darth Maul. Yes. Yep. 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 Yeah. So, um, uh, but. Uh, like the the live action Darth Maul, yeah, um, all, and also mocap Darth Maul from all of the Star Wars cartoons. Oh, I didn't realize he did mocap, but that makes sense for the yeah yeah he movements because he, he's a stunt. Yeah, so he did a, so parkour. When, so when yeah, so when you saw Darth Maul fighting in Rebels and Clone Wars, that was really Darth Maul doing all of those scenes. Yeah, let's see if I can um, scroll through the IMDb list and look for the name. Yeah, there's Colossus was in there, Buck Shadow Scar- Star. Um, there's another Juggernaut. Yeah, there were uh, a bunch. There were a bunch. There were a bunch of Juggernauts in there. A lot of the Pool family. We'll get to them later. Um, cavalry. <laughs> John, that's funny. Um, it's not really showing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not it, important. It, yeah, not important at all. Yeah, so, but, you know, there's a lot. It's a big fight scene ensues. Um, what's her name pulls the skin off of Johnny Blaze. Ugh. Um, You know, because Deadpool goes, oh, he, yeah, he goes on this rant. Oh, he said this and this and this and this and this and this, and this will come back up later. <laughs> <laughs> stay to the end of the credits. Yeah, stay, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, it's 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 an end credit scene that's actually worthwhile. Yeah. Um, so uh, Logan helps them. The two of them escape. Uh, cause the, what's that, the big ethereal monster from the void, um, the cloud. Yeah. The cloud thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so it's basically like, so this, this girl, uh, uh, Cassandra Nova, um, runs the void, but th- this, you know, the deal is that she's got to feed people to this entity. Yeah. Uh, so like he's on his way, they take off, they escape, uh, and then end up basically running into nice pool which was also right. played by Ryan Reynolds mm-hmm. uh, and and the and dog pool <laughs> which apparently the dog was the winner of the ugliest dog in the UK competition yep uh, and and appropriately so the dog was it's, disgusting it's a, it's a hideous dog <laughs> yeah <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is holding the dog and the dog's licking his face and in his mouth and he's just smiling it's so gross <laughs> but um so then there's Nice Pool, who's kind of like long hair, ponytail, kind of looks like a samurai-ish, kind of slightly different suit. Yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, hey, you guys can, yeah, you can borrow my car, which is a, is a, Honda, is a Honda Odyssey. Honda Odyssey, yeah. And then so the two of them, Wolverine and, and Deadpool, are off to uh, huh. head to the west because they, they heard about this, this the other group that uh, Johnny Blaze was helping as a resistance. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they go off, end up in a forest. The two of them, epic fight scene. At one point, they just in, kind of like- In the Honda Odyssey. In, inside the car. Well, mostly inside the car. Yeah. They take turns throwing each other through the windows and roofs and everything else. But eventually, they just kind of pan to like the back door of it with splatters coming every once in a while. And then they speed up to where like the sun sets and then rises again. <laughs> Pans back into the car. Deadpool's tied up in seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> and Logan's asleep. 
So um, somebody comes up and drags them. Then it shows waking up in, in this building. Yeah. This is where it gets really, really, really good. Oh, my God. Is it, yeah. Well, I mean, it's been good, but this was a... This is great. Fantastic reference. So... Did you ever read X-Men comics in the 90s? You're going to appreciate this next scene. Yeah. Um, so, do you want to describe that? I'm, I'm rambling, so you want to try just... I'm just... So, uh, a series a series of, of comic book characters wander in. And apparently, this is their, their hideout out in the middle, middle of the void. Yeah. And... These are all throwaways from different Earths. Throwaways from different Earths. But, oh my gosh, they had... My, Personal favorite, I mean, Gambit was there, and who is yeah, Electra, Electra, and then X twenty two. It's the gr- or X twenty three. Twenty three, yeah. The girl from the movie Logan, who yeah, but it was actually that actress that played the little girl, which was cloned from Logan, I guess, or something. So yeah, and then Wesley Snipes as Blade. As Blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, people forget. Oh yeah, that was a Marvel property. Yeah, Sandy didn't understand. She's like, I don't understand. Why is Blade here? Yeah. yeah. So in this, but the the funny thing is, is Ryan Reynolds was in Blade. Blade I, Three Trinity. I don't remember him in Blade yeah, Three Trinity. He he was one of the hired because remember there was the the paramilitary group thing yeah. that came in, and they had to partner up and like, and the rumors been for twenty years. The rumors been that they did not get along. Mm. Um, in that movie. Ryan uh, Reynolds and, and uh, Wesley Snipes. Yeah, that Wesley just kept referring to him as the arrogant kid or something like that. So, like, I saw an interview with Wesley Snipes where he was describing this. Yeah. And, and he's like, no, that that's not really true. And it probably was really true, but Ryan Reynolds applaud him because even throughout drama, he's like, we got to do this because it's funny. So he called up Wesley Snipes and said, hey, we want to do this thing. And he's like... Yeah, I know you're Ryan Reynolds, but you're not going to be able to do this. They're not going to let you do this, but whatever. It, it, if they say yes, I'm in. Whatever. And Ryan Reynolds calls him <laughs> back like a month later and goes, yeah, we're doing it. So, um, Grab your teeth. Yeah. Come along. It'll be fun. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, had, abs- I had absolutely no idea that's how, that's how uh, Blade, yeah. Blade came to be in the series. But- yeah. So... Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, because it Jessica Biel, Mark Berry, what everything else. So, um, hmm. I'm trying to think. I think it was Blade Trinity. I know it was one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. He played Hannibal King. Yeah. So, um, I don't even know if I've seen that movie. Yeah. The, you know, I love the first one. The first one was absolute dynamite. I you know I really liked all of them, but either way. Um, the funny thing, too, is that during the movie, and I forgot exactly, I feel like it was during this part, they also made a lot of references to the fact that Ryan Reynolds played Wade Wilson in an X-Men movie. That was X3. Yeah, where he mm-hmm. he was the X-Project whatever. Yeah. Um, where he, his mouth was gone and everything else. Y- yep. Which... In the comic books, it's been connected that that project was tied to the creation Deadpool, whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, I I don't know much about that storyline, but that's why he was in there. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad. Uh, That's one of the things that made Ryan Reynolds like, no, 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 we've got to do Deadpool because he played that character. Yeah, we have to do it right. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things that launched it. And they showed clips from that, you know, jump to the end credit scene. They showed, or not end credit scene, but the end credits. They show a bunch of clips from outtakes, but out, yeah, out, yeah, outtakes and BTS clips from the original X Men series means behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, but as you're saying, Blade, holy shit! But Gambit, Ga- Gambit, who is one of like in in the old video games and everything? Yeah. he was like one of the best. It's like and, you want to be Wolverine or you want to be Gambit. So I might actually, I think I have the comic book that it was the first appearance of Gambit as well. Really? So. Um, They've been trying to make this movie for years and years. And the last version of this, where they said they were going to make it, it was actually with the guy, what's his name, that played it in, uh... oh, Channing Tatum. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he was actually slated to play this movie, uh, and the, him showing up as a variant in The Void was perfect. Well, and everybody was 
wearing their their '90s Marvel costumes. Like it, yeah. it, like when the X Men movie came out, there was a big complaint that, you know, they kind of, you know, punched up everyone's costume, or they kind of made them more epic, or yeah. it, it it's 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 the the fun movie version of that comic book character. No, no, these these characters looked exactly like they were drawn in the comic books. Which was great because even Wolverine, the mm-hmm. Wolverine out of the montage that, yeah. that you know, the, the disgraced one, had the yellow suit on. He did. Uh, which tied to a, a really, really great joke about like... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you run security for the San Diego Chargers. Yes. <laughs> or the LA Rams or uh, LA Rams, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, it was LA Rams. The Yes, Rams. Um, but it... Um, but it's great. So then, you know, so those guys join these additional four. Electra, which was um, mm-hmm. um, Electra from the movie. Yep. Uh, and then Blade, Gambit, and the X-23 girl. Uh, so they all go back. They all fight. Well, they, they, they go on a, on, a, on a run to the compound because yeah. that's the way they have to get, uh, get X, uh, Professor X's twin to send them back to yeah. or send them out of the void. Which which led to one of the greatest pieces of dialogue from Blade, where they were making fun of the Punisher. There's a when they were driving, yeah. the, they're, when they're driving the van going on the run or going on that that run, he's like something to the effect of like, "Yeah, I'm I am the one and only Blade," and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, the yeah, fuck the Punisher." There's been like five of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, every time they make a new Punisher movie, they they recast. Well, and the funny thing the is, lead. is on Blade, I think they're in development or pre-production for a new Blade movie. So they say that. They said that line knowing there's about to be a new blade. That's awesome. Let me look that up real fast. No, well, that's a, that's a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah, Blade 2025. Wow. I'm I'm really I'm I'm really impressed. Although actually, yeah. if you're going to come out with a new Blade movie, using a Deadpool cameo to kind of springboard that, because you need you need to remind people that Blade was a thing. Yeah, this guy. Wow. Marshal Ali. We're getting a new blade? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So this was... God, what old is he done? He's I, done... Uh, I, won't, I wonder if Wesley Snipes will have like an old blade cameo. Mm, I doubt like the, it, like maybe. The, like the, the, the Dread Daywalker blade. Yeah. But the, you know, this guy was in um, like Eternals, Invincible... Uh, true detective. Uh, true detective. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Words are hard. Green Book. He was the he was the piano player from Green Book. Great oh. fucking movie. There you go. Um, yeah. So um, that reference was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they go there. <laughs> they fight her. Um, you learn more about like what Wolverine did to mm-hmm. disgrace himself. Yep. Which um, I mean, and you kind of did a little bit throughout the movie, but it it turns out that he basically. Had gotten left, gotten in a fight with, with uh, Charles mm-hmm. Xavier, leaves to go to a bar, gets drunk. While he's gone, this group comes in and kills all of the X Men. Yep. The worst part is, then he goes and kills everybody else. Yeah. So he's known as a murderer, um, a disgraced murderer that travels alone and everything else. So, um, you know, but in this process, he finally sees this is you know. His chance of redemption. Yeah. So um, they convince uh, whatever, Chevy Nova, to um, <laughs> Cassandra Nova. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting all episode to call her Chevy Nova, by the way. Right. The, uh, um, they, she pulls out, it's like, yeah, there's a guy. And like, I tore his skin off and wore it around for three days. <laughs> but he left this trinket, which was, it was Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Yeah. Does a little portal loopy circular motion and it opens up, and then they jump back um, to it's New York, right? Yeah. So it's they jump back to New York on Earth ten thousand and five um, to save the day. Here you go, because the TVA guy that's trying to erase the planet Oblivion, I think, is his character's mm-hmm. name. Uh, Paradox. Paradox. There you go. So he's trying to to do that, and. Um, of course, what happens is uh, the girl, uh, Cassandra Nova, follows them because she's like, hey, I'm going to use this device and I'm going to have all this power and destroy all the world. So it's only the void and then I control everything. And so all of the 
all of the different Deadpools from the void come and join. And there were a lot of freaking Deadpools. Like in there. hundreds, hundred, at least a hundred. There was a lot. Um, so um, and, and there and there were some there were some notable masked cameos. Oh yeah, yeah, in yeah. That. So uh, of course, you know, the, who comes back to this is Nice Pool. Nice uh, Pool. Yeah. yeah, and then <laughs> Deadpool's using him for his shield. Yeah, and he's like, "Don't worry, you'll heal soon." With uh, the healing factor, will take over soon. Goes healing factor? Like <laughs> no idea what he was talking about. Yep. So he died. <laughs> Um, but, um, God, let's look at this list. Well, uh, Ryan Reynolds' wife played Lady Pool. Yep. And actually, I think Blake, they've got a kid that played one of the Blake, pools as Blake well. Lively. Yeah. Yeah. They had, yeah. That kid that played that. Um, Matthew McConaughey played Cowboy, yeah, Cowboy Pool. A lot of people didn't realize that here. Where are the pools? Well, there, there's a lot of those. Hey, that kind of sounds like Matthew McConaughey. Yep. Really was. Um, Nathan yeah. Fillion. As Headpool, yeah. Um, do, do, From do, do, Earth twenty one forty nine. I I don't. I, are they actually credited on IMDb with what Earth they're from? The Dogpool, Screen Mutant Outpost Tech, Lady Deadpool was Blake Lively. Kidpool is a Inez, Inez Reynolds. Um, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, Olin Reynolds is Baby Pool. Hmm. Um, Paul Mullen is Welsh Pool. Now, Paul Mullen, I believe, plays on um, his soccer team. Oh, really? I think so. Um, there was a there was also there was a Canadian pool in that group. There was a, a Deadpool with an all black costume with a uh, Canadian flag on the front. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Canada pool. Alex Christianoff is just a subject of something. Um, and then many, many others. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure the, the Welsh pool was from the soccer team that, that they owned. The Welsh pool. Yeah. There was a, that scene too, because the at the end of the block where they had that fight scene, there was the, um, uh, like just the, the stores in the background mm-hmm. and the one store that was right behind them it was like just for feet or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you know whose just feet it was. Uh, was it Liefeld? Rob Liefeld? Is Liefeld yeah. just just feet? The the comic book artist who notoriously can't draw feet. <laughs> like that's his big nice. That, that's his big claim to fame is that he can't draw feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so Ryan Reynolds gave him a foot store, or I guess a shoe store. That is some you call fucking. Him. Deep dive gangster shit. Yeah, if you're gonna make fun, if you're gonna make somebody fun of somebody professionally, you know, in a movie, do it big. So, um, you would ask me this after I saw it. What was your favorite? Yeah, Life Easter egg. Liefeld's just feet. Honestly, it was John Candy's car from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That was such a. That was such an out of nowhere. Has absolutely nothing to do with the MCU. Is a very blatant. Yeah non-branded like i mean that's like having ferris bueller's ferrari in the background in one of those scenes it's that sure, sure. it's that level of what the fuck is that doing there hmm easter egg wise i i, I kind of really i don't know other than the fact that and it's not really an easter egg but just all of the characters and the actors that they had that didn't even necessarily have lines that were just characters or actors who had played the character before like the guy that did toad yeah like him no lines he's just there for a fight scene and co- and um cool. saber tooth like actually oh. the guy that played saber tooth yep. and him fight yeah um well and and and, th- and that's something it, when you make a movie that's fun like it's just gratuitous fun is the way you can describe these deadpool movies um what was it brad pitt from deadpool 2 yeah he played uh um, the invisible invisible yeah, the, yeah, the invisible guy. He's got a vanisher. I think his yeah. name is. Yeah, and he doesn't actually talk. He doesn't talk, and you, you don't own, see him until you see him for three frames. Do you do you know what um, Brad Pitt asked as payment for doing that cameo? I've heard this before, but I don't remember. A cup of coffee, and like Ryan Reynolds asked him, and he's like, like a cup of coffee franchise. Like this is a big budget superhero. He's like, eh, just, yeah, buy me a cup of coffee. I'll show up. This will be fun. 
it, yeah, it was like, you know, not even a day of shooting. There's a lot of that. Some of these actors had to have just done it just out of, holy shit, yeah. Like, if, if you were, you know, in a comic book movie 20, 30 years ago, and all of a sudden you had a chance to reprise your role for the fun of it. Yeah. I'd have been like, yeah. Absolutely. Although I, although Wesley Snipes is notoriously difficult to work with. Yeah, I still think he would have. He, he's been humbled a lot. Has he? I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With all the tax stuff, going was to jail. It, was it Blade Two? Blade One or Blade Two? Which is the one where they had to open his eyes with CGI because he refused to open them in the scene? I don't know this. There's, question. there's. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll figure out which which Blade movie it was, but um, there's a scene where he's like on a on a in a morgue, like on a on a slab, and in the scene, Wesley Snipes refused to open his eyes for the scene. So they had to just digitally CGI his eyes open, and it looks crazy. I don't know. That's pretty funny, though. That's fucked up. But that, yeah, but that dude's been pretty humbled. I'm sure that he was excited because he's pretty much, I think he's declared himself retired. Ah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, the, the in the Blade Trinity movie, Blade wakes up in a morgue, and his eyes get CGI'd. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of funny. Hmm. Thanks, visual effects team. Yay! Mm, but it looks really like it looks really obvious if you if you see the clip. I'm like, oh shit! Well, CGI wasn't what it is today. I mean, some of those scenes even. I mean, they were great. The visual effects on this movie were just Two, off the charts good. Two thousand four. Yeah, I don't. Mm, there's off the charts good, and then there's what you would expect. Like I am so just jaded by visual effects now that you really got to go out of your way to be like, wow, that was absolutely fantastic versus that's exactly what I would have expected to see from a Disney Marvel production. Yeah, but even still, like some of the the BTS stuff, like when Deadpool's dancing to Bye Bye Bye, Mm -hmm. that wasn't filmed in a forest. That's in a green screen. Him dancing and killing those guys. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a forest. It, I mean, that's just like so much is done. I'm assuming that was volume. Uh, no, it just actually that scene, the behind the scenes that I saw just looked like it was regular green screen. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. But I, I, I don't know. I see that stuff and it's like there's gratuitous and then there's storytelling device. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing talking to Courtney recently about some of the motion capture stuff that that oh. um, the latest sample I saw of motion capture work that's coming out of Jim Henson Studios right now. Mm-hmm. Breathtaking, you know, and it's all in Unreal and, you know, yeah. Unreal 5. Yep. Um, and it, it's like, holy shit, beautifully rendered everything else. And it's this like when we we did the tour years ago with the hand puppets mm-hmm. and, um, and then there's the body actors and everything else coming together and changing the way that CGI animated movies are that are in high resolution with unbelievable layered mapping lights, all the, 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 the light mapping and textures are just so unbelievable and it's done in real time. Mm-hmm. Like you're filming game, and, game engines are kind of powerful like that. Yeah. So, um, and when they're, you know, the, the clip that she, she sent me, the last one that I saw, is getting near photorealistic. Wow. In motion capture. Like when we saw it, what, seven years ago or six years ago, it was pre-pandemic, so probably like five. Yeah. When we saw it five-ish years ago, we saw it in a condition where they're doing... It was a children's you know, TV show. Yeah. Yeah, low... My, my, low daughter, my daughter loved that show. Artistic quality. I don't want to say it's cheap because, I mean, it, was, it wasn't cheap, but it was, it was that... It's very young, child childlike, stylized cartoon. Very standard. Y- yeah. If, if if you if you saw the if you saw the show on Netflix, you'd be like, oh, this is a very nice CGI show for yeah my five year old to watch. It's freaking per- it's perfect. And now it's it's um it's well almost yeah. photorealistic in world. Yeah, which is it's getting there, which is crazy. But also, I mean, I've I I mm, mocap has kind of ruined the cartoons for me because you know again i have a five-year-old daughter i watch a lot of cartoons and i can tell which ones are done 
with motion capture and which ones are not. Because the ones that are not done with motion capture are noticeably worse from a movement standpoint. Like, you can you can tell, obviously. Yeah, that would the, they do it too good now? Uh, no, it's just the, the, the stuff that's done with motion capture, it's, there's a, there's a more natural movement, a more fluid movement. It just, there's no goofy turns or weird rotations where you're like, oh, clearly somebody just spun the Z axis by 10 degrees to make this scene happen. Like, no, no, that was a guy in a suit that spun around. Like you can, you can tell the difference. Sure. But. What the hell is that? Sounds like a motorcycle throwing up. <laughs> or my cat's throwing up. I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, moving on. So that's Deadpool. I don't know <laughs> I don't know what else there is to cover. I mean, we've really spoiled the fuck out of it, so Yeah. I really hope that you guys have all watched it. If you haven't, I mean it's on you. This is just on you. It's a it's a it's a really great movie. Again, gratuitous fun. There's a lot of cameos and there's a lot of references, but it's still a good story and like the story stands on its own regardless of yeah of all that stuff there's so much there that sandy didn't see she enjoyed it a lot she laughed she had a lot of fun yeah if you can go into it as a non a non fan and i'm i'm a i'm shit i'm even a light fan you know i, yeah. I don't i don't i don't follow the superhero stuff as religiously no as it took you a long there. time to to watch loki but when you did you liked it I don't know. Was it Loki? It took me a while to watch. Yeah. I, I well. Uh, yeah. And then I liked. I really liked Loki. And then I went back and I started watching everything that was in support of Loki. Yeah. I should probably do that with this one too. Just watch Logan. God damn it. It's it's yeah. good. It's a different kind of superhero movie. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm not denying it. I'm not denying it. It it damn it's right. way more emotional investigation into that. Uh, I mean. You know, um, Patrick Stewart, Professor X is in it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You know, which is interesting because, again, in the main storyline, they kill him off. I, X3 was so bad, I stopped paying attention. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then they went back like, to the, like the younger pro- X-Men with uh, McElroy. McElroy? McElroy. No. I think that what's his name that plays young Professor X? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what what movie was that? That was in uh yeah one of the one of the throwback things. Yeah, X Men First Class, James McAvoy. Yeah, and Michael Fassbender. Yep. And by the way, Fassbender did also he did a great Magneto. His Magneto, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Huh. I don't know. Deadpool, though. Deadpool, it just, it brings back life into a franchise that, I don't, is fatigue the wrong word? There's just so much content that's out there. And I don't know, between content overload, toxic fandom, like just a bunch of people are not tuning in to the Disney Plus shows. Well, and some of them are important and some of them are filler. Um. But even like I enjoy some of the filler, like Lady or She Hulk was yeah. terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible in regards to <laughs> how it came across with the story and development, whatever. They're not doing anything with it, but it was fun. It had some cameos, yeah, it, you know, and it had some other tie-ins, and it was fun. But I didn't take it seriously, so I was able to enjoy it on a level. Um, then there's the Miss Marvel with the young new girl. And I heard that was good. It was good, but it was also very childlike in the production value and the storytelling devices. But, like, I watched it with my daughter. And, you know, it. I think some of those shows make it approachable for people, young women, specifically in this case, where it's like, hey, we're making heroes for you. Yeah. Um that aren't necessarily patronizing. It's like, hey, there is a demographic that we want to be able to show these to. Um, bigger picture, then they do the Marvels mm-hmm. with the three Miss Marvel, Marvel, you know, Captain Marvel, Marvel characters, everything else. And I think they dropped the ball. The, you know, they, I think 
they tried to take this younger, sillier version of a show on content and all, me- and then toss it into content that should have been on par with the Avengers, and then it wasn't. Hmm. So I think you know, having the various degrees of content, I think, are fine, but you have to be honest about what it is. Yeah, and very careful when you try and cross those over. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where it didn't necessarily sell. Make the content. If you've got viewership, make the content and f- and 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 hit that wide range of viewers. But you know, know what you're doing. Hmm. No, that's, you know, that's fair. Loki, Loki, and the TVA is a very integral part of the Marvel universe, so it had to be good. It it did, and yeah. And there's a lot of movies that are kind of leaning on the back of that story. Because, I mean, the TVA yeah. didn't... We didn't see the TVA before until Loki, correct? Correct. Yeah. So they were introducing they were introducing a major chunk of the multiverse. And actually, that was supposed to kick off the whole Kang storyline thing before they axed that. Yeah. For a number of reasons. Um, you know, but then the Kang story also tied into... Um, the Ant Man in the whatever verse thing, but the last Ant Man movie was but, tied to Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, we're using the whole thing to launch Phase Thirty Seven. Yeah, or whatever. You know, but at the same time, I think that the Loki TVA multiverse should have been better incorporated into the storytelling for the f- the last um, Doctor Strange movie okay. where they had the girl come in and it was the multiverse of madness whatever um and i i, th- I, didn't, I didn't see it yeah it's it's like it I was, I was that one to, i was talking to a friend of mine last week and she's just like yeah that was overwhelming the multiverse of madness just kind of like eh. well it and here here's my like they had done loki and i think they could have leaned on that and instead they leaned on a new character that could jump universes and um I'm trying to remember because I don't. Like, it wasn't riveting enough to really connect. It wasn't riveting enough to remember yeah. or watch again or care but about. What I remember was they've done all this work, one in and and the TVA and the multiverse and what that means in Loki, but at the same time they had Doctor Strange shatter their multiverse in Spider-Man No Way Home. Or at Homecoming. Was it Homecoming? It was Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming. The final, the most recent Spider-Man. Yeah. Where you, he, and, and the spell that he tried to cast and Peter Parker fucked it up and it kind of shattered the multiverse. And then you had Doc Ock, who was the Doc Ock from the original Sp- Spider-Man come in. And then you had Tobey Maguire and um, what's his name? Andy Garfield. Yeah. Um, th- not Andy Garfield. Um, something Garfield. James. Jim, John, no, Lawrence. No, hold on. <laughs> uh, we here at Roman Nerdy like to give a big shout out to Andy Garfield. No, for his participation in the Spider-Man series. No, it's something Garfield. I swear it is. It's um. It's not really showing it. Yeah, this is what no prep gets you. Yeah. Why don't you just type in Garfield? Run IMDb and just see what comes up. You know, like the names. Maybe movie. Maybe an orange cat. Gar. Feel that guy right there. Him. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew Garfield. I, I was right. Okay. Ish. The ish. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I just I, I referred to him like we're old friends. You know, Andy. Andy. You know, fucking Andy. Anyway, so. Um. Yeah, so they had the other people who played yeah. Spider-Man come in, and and so that was cool. Yep. I just like I would have liked to seen them like expand on the fact that Doctor Strange broke the multiverse, and they kept going down that path instead of making it this complete arbitrary other thing to introduce this character that wasn't engaging. Hmm. So, I think it was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Had they done it right, I think uh, uh, had we they done, all had they done it differently. And I, I like I'm not trying to be toxic fandom. I just think in to finish the sentence, had they done it right, it would have been a more of a must see movie to continue the storytelling of that multiverse. Got it. Instead, 
they told several different versions of things happening in that story about different things and, and it lacked the interconnectivity to really be a cohesive storytelling universe, the MCU. Okay. My opinion. Fair. I don't have enough info to argue that. Okay. You should see it and then we'll argue about it later. So um, I think we should wrap up a couple things. Um, officially, we're going back to the Mike High. We are going back to the Mike High. Yeah. yeah. Um, Soon. Yeah, I think that will be uh, two weeks from this episode because yeah. we'll, we're going to record it during yeah, 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 the day yeah. that the next or you know the next one comes out. We'll record yeah. it that day. So the following, so about two weeks, uh, we'll have that. Um, we've got um, our buddy Scott has got a rum tasting from a distillery that he went to in Georgia, I think. Yeah. Um, so there's there's th- that's coming. Uh, I've got my little uh, challenge thing that I need to put together and prep oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. for you. But it might be good to do that one with Scott maybe next week. Okay. Because it would be fun to have this as a competition, you and somebody else. Ooh, okay. Um, well, then you have homework. Yeah. I just got to put it together. Which, I mean, it's not hard. I just got to get some the, the free, official free, questions. Free time questions. I don't understand this concept of free time you mentioned. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking right. forward to it. Cool, cool. Well, with that, hey, first off, start out a uh, big thank you to our friend Dave Martin. DemoDavePro.com. Yeah, that's his website. You can check us out on our website, rumandnerdy.com. Social media is at rumandnerdy. Uh, you can email us at show at rumandnerdy.com. And uh, oh, yeah, we'd love oh. to hear from you guys. Yeah. Is that it? We still got to get back to the... Um, oh, the guy with the thing. The Yeah, the composer guy. Yeah. Um, did you listen to his stuff, by the way? I did. He's got some really he good stuff us, in there. Like, that's re- and I loved the way he kind of sent that emailable link with a header that personalized to it. I want to yeah. find out how he does it because I think that's a good development device. I want to I want to pick his brain about that. So um, we're going to reach out to you soon and try and schedule a time. I promise <laughs> we want to get you on the show. Uh, it's been a, like with the... The, the changes and, and yeah. the, the production company starting up and all the wonderful things we're doing with that. It's just been really hectic and day jobs and families. But um, summer was supposed to be a lot easier than what it is. No, no. It doesn't get any easier. No, this is, this is, this was a Nothing busy but summer. hard. Nothing but hard. <laughs> all hard, all the time. <laughs> Pay Viagra att- Radio. Pay attention. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, um, I th- let's run off and go to this TEA event. Oh, uh, yeah. TEA. Great. Stay nerdy, my friends.